Nvidia discontinued the 16 series graphics cards earlier this year, eliminating popular graphics cards like the 1650 and the 1660 Super, which is largely considered the king of 1080p gaming on a budget. So we have a really, really simple question. Are the 16 series graphics cards still worth it in today's PC building world and climate? We're going to look into some information, go over some statistics, and hopefully give you a better overview of this question in today's video. Howdy, my name is Timmy, here with Serious Power PC. And before we get too far into this video, please go ahead and leave a like to boost our videos in the algorithm, as well as subscribing and hitting that notification bell on, that way you're notified every single time we upload a brand new video. We're making gaming content, and it's it's coming. It might, some videos might be out by the time you see this, but some videos might also not be out. We may still be working to try and launch some things. So gaming content coming really, really soon. Thank y'all so, so much for waiting on us to get this great gaming content put out in your inbox. Now, before we get into the central question of today's video, I was personally kind of confused because I didn't know what exact cards that NVIDIA was discontinuing. So I have a list over here of graphics cards that NVIDIA is discontinuing. They're discontinuing the GeForce GTX 1630, the 1650, the 1650 Ti, the 1660, the 1660 Ti, and the 1660 Super. NVIDIA claims that the main reason they're eliminating this line of graphics cards, I don't know why I keep saying eliminating, it makes it sound like they're gonna put all the graphics cards in a big pile and just burn them. No, it's just that they won't be making new graphics cards uh, in this particular lineup. They cite the main reason as being they want to shift the consumer towards the RTX line of graphics cards with the RTX having features like its incredible DLSS and ray tracing capabilities that have been showcased more and more in the last couple years. But this is going to affect people, and the main people it's going to affect is you and me, the consumers. The 16 series graphics cards are over time going to become less and less stocked by more and more places just simply due to the fact that they're not making any new graphics cards. So. It'll, in a couple years, I imagine, be most likely primarily used 16 series graphics cards that you would be looking at buying, which there's no problem with buying a used graphics card as long as the proper stress tests and proper information is supplied, but in a couple years, we are going to be to that point where it's only used 16 series cards on the market. I understand why NVIDIA is choosing to shift a bit more towards their RTX series of cards rather than the GTX series, but I'm also kind of concerned because that means that entry-level graphics cards are just going to get more expensive. And I understand that things are going to get more expensive with factors like, you know, uh, inflation and um, supply chain shortages, which as of right now, there aren't any horrible supply chain shortages that I know of, but it just, it concerns me for the, <laughs> for the introductory PC builder that's building their first PC to like uh, look up and see just this mountain of, oh, I need all of this just to build my PC and the price is being astronomically high. I, as someone who once was looking to get my feet wet with PC building, I don't want the cheapest option out there to be a $300 graphics card from NVIDIA, which is why I'm really, really glad that people like AMD and Intel are stepping up and taking some of NVIDIA's market share. One of the main ways that AMD is taking market share from NVIDIA is uh, with new lines of CPUs that run really, really great uh, performance-wise, like the 8000G series, which we made a video last week on. I will leave that video in the top right hand of the screen now. Now, let's take a look at a specific card in the 16 series that really shined above most of the rest, and that is the GTX 1660 Super. This was actually the card I had in my PC for the longest time, and it ran really, really well. My PC was a pre-built PC, however, 
at the time I bought my PC, the 1660 Super was only around $200. I believe it was less when I looked it up. Like, that was a good price for a graphics card. And this just goes back to what I was saying earlier about I'm worried that more entry-level PCs are going to be even more expensive just because the graphics cards have to be more powerful and they have to have all of these fancy features that don't get me wrong the fancy features are really really nice but that makes them more expensive at the end of the day and that makes entry-level options not as widely available. The GTX 1660 Super was kind of considered the king of budget 1080p gaming and you could see why the price to performance ratio was really really good and it sat well with gamers who didn't want to spend a car payment on their GPU. With just a quick Google search, you can find some really, really nice models for the GTX 1660 Super that come in right around $200. So, the central question of this video, are the GTX 16 series graphics cards still worth it in April of 2024? Yes and no. There are some reasons why it would be a good idea to go with these graphics cards, and there are some reasons why it would be a bad idea to go with these graphics cards. Number one is obviously performance. For example, the GTX 1660 Super only has 6 gigabytes of VRAM, which is still nothing to sneeze at. That's still a whole lot better than, you know, your onboard graphics, but at the end of the day, it's going to depend on your budget. Here at Sirius Power PC, we can't tell you what to do with your money. But what we can do is recommend to you parts that fit for your budget and get excellent performance out of your machine. So if you have a lower budget, then consider the 16 series of graphics cards. I can personally very highly recommend the 1660 Super because that was my graphics card for two and a half years and it worked really, really well and it didn't seem to show signs of wear or tear, it didn't have tons of annoying driver updates, it did have some here and there obviously, but it wasn't a horrible graphics card, it was really really good for what I needed it to do. Now, this is really, really cool. Using a tool called HowManyFPS.com, I did some calculations to see how the GTX 1660 Super would do in different games running in 1080p on the highest setting in that game possible, and the results are kind of crazy. <laughs> Also, in case you're wondering, I used an Intel i5-12600K for the statistics run by HowManyFrames.com. In Fortnite, you can get around 75 frames per second on epic settings with ray tracing off. This leaves you at around $2.57 per FPS. If we look at Rainbow Six Siege on ultra settings with the in-game benchmark tool, you can get 300 FPS on average with a value rating of around a dollar per FPS. Finally, let's look at good old Minecraft, a game that I played with this graphics card quite a lot. You can get an average of over 500 FPS in Minecraft with this CPU plus GPU combo, and I literally broke the scale for FPS per dollar on this website, so it's really, really good FPS per dollar for Minecraft, that's all I can say. And I can personally tell you that usually in my single player worlds, because I was a lonely boy and barely played any multiplayer, on single player worlds, I tended to average around 500 frames per second uh, with this graphics card and my Intel i5 12400, I think. It might be an 11400, I'm not entirely uh, certain what that CPU was. Granted, all of this was 1080p, but that's really, really good performance to be on ultra and high settings. Like, as high as the settings will go is what we had these tests locked into. And this card's performing really, really well. So just consider that if you're working with a budget, look into the 16 series. You know, watch some other gameplay on YouTube. Watch some other more in-depth benchmarks 
of this graphics card in different games. Go to howmanyfps.com and enter in the CPU you think you might be buying and the games that you think you'll be playing and run FPS tests, which obviously it is subject to change a little bit from this website. Well, I'll leave this tool linked in the description down below. It's a really cool tool. I really think you should check it out if you're considering building a custom PC anytime in the near future. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this week's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you're still watching at this point, we absolutely love you. Please go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. That also helps us know you want to see more videos like this. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the bell on so you're notified every single time we upload. We upload every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're starting to upload some gaming videos during the week as well. So those are the videos that you want to be notified of when they come out. Also, share this with a friend who just won't trade in their crusty, dusty PS4 for a brand new PC. Tell them to look over at SeriousPowerPC.com if they have any questions, just want to browse, or are looking to step into PC gaming. My name is Timmy, here with Serious Power PC, and be sure to look out for some new gaming videos hitting our channel in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video.